Hello. So I wanted to create a short video explaining a little bit about the situation that happens uh, with modeling uh, population densities over time. So if you look at figure 40.1 in your textbook, there is a graph here with the x-axis as time, although it isn't labeled, and the y-axis as population. Again, that isn't labeled. But I'm going to label it here. So at point one on the graph, that is what they call the lag phase. So what we're looking at here is this is the point when you have a very small population in a given area of a given species. And over time, that species is reproducing, but also perhaps dying. And if reproduction doesn't happen faster than dying, then the number doesn't grow very fast. And in fact, it would grow very slowly. So that's why they call it the lag phase, because there's a bit of a lag in how fast the species population is growing. And then we get to a situation where reproduction is really starting to outpace de death. So that would be the exponential growth phase. And the reason they call it exponential growth is because when you're calculating exponential growth, add the population at a given time, apply that by the growth rate, and that growth rate is going to be to the exponent of the time. So if, say, you're looking at uh, units of years, then you would take the population that you started with, multiply by the known growth rate of that species, and take the growth rate to the exponent of however many years into the situation you want to observe. So when we get to uh, point three, that is what they call the inflection point. And it's an inflection in the curve of the graph, but it also means that it's uh, the spot where theoretical growth and realized growth will begin to differ. Up to this point, theoretical and realized growth would be very similar. The dotted line going through point three represents theoretical growth. The blue solid line represents realized growth. Realized growth just means the growth that actually happens. The reason that there's a difference is that theoretical growth is the amount of individuals that could be there at a given time if there are no environmental pressures to keep their numbers down. So no predators to eat them, no environmental hardships like a drought or a tornado or, or any kind of disaster, um, no competition, plenty of resources, unlimited food, lots of places to live. All of those things are not counted when they say theoretical growth. Actual growth would be actually going out and observing that population, counting the number of individuals and plotting it on the graph. Now, when you get to 0.4, that's the decreasing growth rate. And when you get to 0.5, that's the carrying capacity. Now notice that four and five don't have a population difference that is that large. In fact, it's quite a small difference. The reason for that is any given environment can be assumed that it will support only a certain number of any given species. So we call that the carrying capacity because it's how many individuals can that environment have the capacity to support or carry. It's a situation where the population size becomes in balance with the environment. So in this graph, it's showing that it reaches carrying capacity and it just levels off. So that would be a situation where environmental pressure but reproduction are in an equal state and it just continues forever at a very stable population size. Now, another thing that can happen is if you've got seasonal variability in the area, say perhaps a predator comes and goes with the seasons or a food source disappears with the seasons, uh, you might see a graph that sort of looks like this, where over time, 
the carrying capacity is higher or lower. So therefore, the population number doesn't balance out at one exact number over time, but rather it's more that there's a seasonal difference to the numbers of individuals. Another thing you might see is if you have a closed environment where the resources are extremely uh, fixed in amount. So that would be like the bacteria in a broth culture example that was in the textbook. If there are a growing number of bacteria in that culture, but you're never refreshing the growth media that feeds them and provides nutrition, then what's going to happen is after all of that nutrition is gone, the growth is just going to drop off steeply. And the reason that it does that is because the bacteria have nothing to sustain them anymore. The resources are suddenly gone. Then it happens very quickly. So those are some of the different ways populations can increase, decrease, and reach a balance.